Okay, good people. Now, I want a little bit of sensitivity from you right now, okay? Because somebody sent me a photograph and they want our help. This person is looking for love. Ladies and gentlemen, hopefully not boys and girls, can I introduce you to this individual? He wrote to me and he told me that he was trying his luck on Tinder, but he's not having much luck and can I help? Okay, mate, what was the name you gave me? Clint Thrust? Oh my God, you've got to be kidding. Okay, well, you're in luck, Clint because this is part four of the five steps towards improving your photos. This is all about blemish removal. And I do have to say, maybe the reason our boy is not getting the success he would like with online dating is because you can see one or two spots in his profile picture. Let's come to, yes, magnifying glass is selected. Let's zoom in just a little bit. Yeah, you can see a couple of spots there. Right, well, the good news is we can do a whole lot with this. So we come to our layers palette, as before, right click, duplicate layer. Let's give this a name. Let's call this Beauty Shot. And we'll work on this and we'll compare before and after. Now for this, you really should be working at 100% magnification. The way you do it, you can either come down here where it says one to one. That's 100% magnification. You could type it in here or you can just come to your magnifying glass and double click, there you are, 100%. And while you're here, don't forget, use the space bar, which converts to the hand tool, which means you can move your image around. So this is actually quite easy, where it says enhance, and we come to this little icon here, the healing brush tool, click on it. And down the bottom, in the tool options bar, You've got two kinds. You've got the healing brush tool and you've got this one, the spot healing brush tool. Well, let's face it, our boy's got a little bit of a problem with spot, so we're going to select this one first. We'll take a look at the other one in just a little bit. And you come onto your picture, you get your little cursor. Can you see it? Just as I wiggle it around. And it's very simple. You select the brush you want. Now, I've got a feeling I may have been playing with the brushes beforehand. Yeah, natural brushes too. I want a very simple brush with a soft edge. So I'm going to come to my drop down here. I'm going to come to my default brushes. Now, what kind do I want? I'm going to come to my sidebar here and scroll down. Yeah, any one of these would be okay. If I zoom right in, you can see it's got a soft edge. I want something with a pretty soft edge. So I'll select this one. Now, let's find a slight imperfection to tackle. I'm up here towards the top of the forehead. Now here's the trick with this. You want the size of your brush to be a little bit larger than the area you're trying to cover up, but no bigger than that. So for this, take a look at your keyboard. On mine, just next to my P key, I've got two brackets. I've got the square brackets keys. If I hit the right one, see what's happening? To my brush size, it's getting bigger. If I press the left one, it gets smaller. Left square bracket, things get smaller. Right square bracket, things get bigger. All right, so I want it about, say, what, that size? And all I do is I click and it goes. Now, do you see the problem just there? Two things happening. One, my brush size is a bit too small, so I'm going to press Command plus C to undo that. Make my brush size a bit bigger. Try now. I'm keeping my brush clicked down because now you can see the brush I selected is maybe just a little bit too soft for this. I'm getting a reasonable result, but I'm going to press Command plus Z for this to undo again. Let's try and find a different brush. I want something just a little bit harder. Oh, now what about these? Let's try, say, Airbrush Pen Opacity Flow. Let's try selecting that one. It's 19 pixels now. I need it to be larger, but I'll make it. But I'll do that by just by hitting my square bracket keys and come here and click that's giving me a better result. So now all I have to do is just go around and it's actually quite therapeutic. Whenever I find a little bit of spot or a little bit of looks like stray dandruff here, I can just come through and I click and it goes away. How simple is this? Okay, for some of these larger areas, make my brush head larger and larger and a bit smaller for this one. So what's actually happening here? Oh, that didn't quite work. Let's try that again. Well, I can demonstrate that by coming to the other healing tool here, the Healing Brush Tool J. There we go. Now with this one, it works slightly differently. 
Instead of it doing everything automatically, I have to select a certain area of skin that I want to get stamped down somewhere else. Now in this case, look at this area of skin here. That's looking fairly smooth. So what I do is I look for the Option key, Alt or Option, depending on whether you're on the Mac or the PC, you hold it down. You see I've got this little cursor, this little crosshair. This is going to be my sample point. And if I click there, wherever I move my cursor to, supposing I want to say to move this area, I'll make it a little bit bigger. Whatever was in that area is about to get stamped down here. But there's a difference. What it will do, if I come over to say over here, it will take the texture from my sample area, this little bit down here, this kind of smooth area, and it will attempt to put it down in a new area, but it will also attempt to match the colors that surround the area. Look, if I come over to this side of the picture here, you can see the light is a lot more yellowish. And sure enough, you can see that my sample area is looking really quite pink, but I'll make it a little bit smaller. If I click on, say, this point just here, click. You see it's taken the texture from here and it's matched that texture with the colors that surrounded the area I've just corrected. I'll do it for you again, just to make it crystal clear. If I come to say, you see these areas around here, you've got a more textured area. If I come to this area here, and if I press my Alt or Option button, I'll take a sample from this area here. You can see the hair there. If I was to take that and put that down here, and let go, you see what it did? Took that texture and matched it up with the surrounding colors, or at least it tried to. Okay, so that didn't work, so I pressed Command plus Z for that. But now that I've shown you that, you can see that if I try and take from, say, a smooth area like this area around here, where there's a fairly smooth texture, press Alt to select around here, then come over, maybe make my brush size a bit smaller, click, you get a better effect. Right, that's the principle there. The Spot Healing Brush, well, that kind of does the same thing, but Elements is choosing the sample point for you. So all you have to do is just carry on, Going around, correcting, make a bit smaller here, correcting, 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 correcting. This is actually quite therapeutic. I'm making somebody beautiful. It's like, you know, bubble wrap. When you get a bubble wrap and you stop popping the bubbles, it's a bit like that, but in digital format and you're making somebody beautiful again. Now, you see this bit here, the wrinkles? Well, so look, instead of just going plonk, plonk, I can take my brush and I can drag it like this. Yep, it works on lines as well. Look, see, like this. This is a very quick and simple way to erase wrinkles. Okay, I'm starting to get a little bit not talking to my customers because I just find this just so relaxing. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to fade out, fade back in again when I've made the various changes. And so you can see a before and after. So I'll see you on the flip side of this. Okay. I must admit, I am rather excited. I feel like one of those presenters off these radical makeover programs and they do the big reveal at the end, the before and after. Well, this is the before and after. This is before and... Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with just one or two tweaks. And how much better is our friend looking? Now, I decided to make this a fairly comprehensive makeover. Not that he needed it, did me no. It's just I wanted to illustrate a point that you can keep going with this until eventually you start losing some wrinkles you can start to get a slightly plastic appearance. Look, if I if I make this layer invisible again, you can see, okay, I've got rid of some of these slightly and slightly blemishes, but I also got rid of the various different wrinkles there. Now the wrinkles are part of a face. Also, I'm sure I probably got rid of maybe one or two birthmarks there. But things like spots or zits, whatever you want to call them, sure, get rid of them because they are temporary, but you'll find a lot of professional photographers won't remove permanent things like birthmarks that are part of who a person is. And also with the wrinkles, yep, sure you can get rid of a few of them, but eventually you can start to alter the shape of someone's face. Take this for example, come back to spot and hand, so I'm in the right layer, that's good. Just supposing for the sake of argument, I got a bit trigger happy with the spot removal. And supposing I started to remove a 
bits around here. Now you can see it's starting to look a little bit odd. Okay, I won't keep on going with that because, well, you can see the general principle. Okay, and now just a couple of very final pieces of advice. All right, now I've done here the classic thing that everyone does. If I come down here, press my space bar so I get my hand moved down here. I did the face, but I didn't do the hand. Look, I've got one or two little marks there, which maybe I'd want to get rid of. Maybe I don't, I don't know. The very final thing, Clint, if that's your real name. Okay, look, I can tell you why you're not getting the results you would like on Tinder. That is a wedding ring there, Clint. You're married. Rookie mistake, mate. Rookie mistake.